This is going to be the part one of a two part review of Andy who is Skyscraper on fbvhub.com It's his digital or analog converter for Easy UHF The reason behind the project was Easy UHF outputs its signal uh, its RSSI signal via a digital signal instead of an analog one 99% of the OSDs out there only accept an analog signal. There's only a few like EZ, OSD and APM that can take the digital signal and convert it. So for the vast majority of users, uh, the digital signal is in fact useless. Uh, the digital or analog cons converter is also known as a DAC. Uh, I might refer to it as a DAC as we go on, so that's what I'm referring to. It's not the first of its kind. A couple of different versions have been made, things from brushed uh, motor ASCs, there's an Arduino version that I made myself um, but that has its problems, it doesn't seem to work, it gives 100% to 97 then it stayed at 97 and only dropped to 0 when a control was lost, making it useless never did find out why. Mictronics on FPV Labs also made a version uh, it ran for a very short amount of time um, and then he decided to cease making it and has made no indication of ever making it again uh, for whatever reason uh, maybe it wasn't cost effective I don't know um, so that's no longer available then we had two that were made in China and um, that I'll show you here um, both units didn't really get any reports back on how good they were if they were any good um, but again both units were discontinued uh, here's the second one uh, they were both discontinued uh, pretty much straight away and you can't get hold of them anymore for whatever reason. This leaves easy UHF owners with a dilemma. Uh, so we had a brief chat on FPV Hub where with Andy and Andy said he could bring, make up a design and manufacture it and uh, hand it all out and see how we, uh, we felt about it. See if it worked, see if it was uh, worth pursuing. So here it is. The unit itself is uh, very neatly made, it's very compact, everything is laid out well, it's labelled up well. Uh, as you can see from the rear when I show you it, um, all the labels are clear, There's very, it's going to be very hard to make a mistake. I'll try and turn it around as easy as possible with a cast on. I uh, broke my hand which is why the reviews took a while to come. But uh, here you can see the reverse, uh, I'll take you through the pins. Well, first I'll get it centred a little bit better. There we go. Use the wrong hand, the wrong hand with the cast. That would have been much quicker using your left. Right, I will get a pointer. And here we go. The first pin is the PWM input pin. This pin is for a digital signal from the EZ UHF telling the DAC what the RSSI signal strength is. This next pin is a 5 volt pin. This and a ground volt pin. Uh, this means that you can connect via one cable only to the Easy UHF. The Easy UHF outputs its RSSI via a spare channel. Each channel has a signal, a 5 volt and a ground volt pin. So that's it. One single uh, connection, one servo wire is all that's needed to power and send the signal out. On the output side we have a ground pin. Uh, some OSDs require a ground pin to the RSSI but most don't because it's common. An alternative 5 volt pin to power it if you want to power it from the other side. Uh, in most cases this won't be needed. And then we have the RSSI output pin. This output is going to be the analog output. This will go to your OSD RSSI input pin. And it will then enable you to calibrate the RSSI out input and show you not so 100% of your RSSI. Okay, so we're on the bench. What we're looking at here, we're looking at a Fluke 117 digital multimeter. Uh, it's set to DC volts. It is then connected to the output stage, the analog output stage of the digital or analog converter. It's going to measure the voltage of the output. We have a receiver pack, which in turn powers a servo tester and the DAC itself. Uh, connected to the servo tester is a servo. This servo is going to be a representation of the output of the tester. In its current position it's showing no, well, not the minimum signal, not no signal, minimum signal, which on the multimeter is shown as 0.6 volts. 
as I crank the servo test around using the dial you should see the servo arm increase and turn around as your visual representation and then we should see on the multimeter the output increase it should go up to 5 volts if all things are correct and all everything being equal so as I'm turning it around you can see the uh, servo arm going up I've took it, taken it to roughly 50% signal output as you can see the uh, digital multimeter has gone to 2.845 volts which is basically 50% between 5 volts and 0.6 Cranked it round to full now and we're getting near as damn it 5 volts output. So that's showing that the converter is converting PWM signal which is basically 1000 microseconds all the way up to 2000 microseconds all the way back down again as you can see it's dropping back down to 0.6 as you can see I'm driving it up between full and minimum and it's going between 5 and 0.6 now if I drive it quickly you can see that the output actually is slowed down somewhat and as you can see I'm driving it up down up down as fast as possible giving it a jerky output this is because on the RSSI from the receivers the output is jerky it's never smooth but what you're seeing on the output stage is because of the resistor and the capacitor working as like a delay, a buffer or a timer. I'll, I'll bring the meter here close so you can see the bar at the bottom. So you can see it's smoothly going up and down. It's it's delayed. So even though I'm giving a jaggedy, uh, inconsistent output, the output on the multimeter is nice and slowly scaling up and down. This is exactly what you want. You don't want an RSSI value jumping around while you're flying. You, 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 want, you want a slow and consistent change in your RSSI. It's a slow process RSSI. You will slowly lose the value as you fly away. So you don't need a real-time update of tenths of a millivolt every millisecond. You don't want that, you want a gradual, slow, smooth display so you can just slowly watch it decreasing down. Because of the nature of how slow the RSSI moves anyway, it's, it's, you don't want it to be fast. It's, the delay is not even going to be noticeable because the RSSI is going to drop off so slowly. It's just going to smooth out the inconsistencies in the, in the output as it jumps around. So for me, this is ideal. This is exactly what you want. So part two, I'm going to put it in the plane and we're going to fly it and then we're going to see the actual real-time uh, RSSI value as I scoot about. Um, I have no quibbles with this. It, it's going to work as it should be. Right, thanks for uh, watching and join me in part two.